So next up, we have another one of our uh, exciting companies. These guys are actually in the smart jewelry space. Uh, we have a few different companies who are working on jewelry uh, and making it more intelligent than just something we wear uh, as a fashion accessory. So uh, first, first up here, we have Dylan and Jeff. So one, one quick big round of applause for them as well. Tyler's still playing back there. I can hear him. <laughs> Tyler, I promise, I'll, I'll drop you a beat in a little, or I'll give you a whole rap. Just drop me a beat in a little bit. All right, here's Jeff, everybody. Hello, I'm Jeff Axup, CEO of Sense6. And I'd like to introduce to you to this thing around my neck here, which is Artemis, smart jewelry for personal safety. The question we'd like to ask you is, whose safety do you care about? To illustrate the problem, I'd like to tell you about a week in San Francisco. So this is a true story. This is the headline. And what happened, this is uh, just downtown in San Francisco here, there was a woman that was sitting at a bus stop. And she was waiting for the bus, and instead of a bus pulling up, a van pulled up. And three guys jumped out, picked her up off the, the bench, tossed her in the car. Unfortunately, she was assaulted. And um, she was able to escape later on. She was able to call the police. But really, the damage had already been done. So unfortunately, this was not an isolated event. There was 1,875 other incidents, many of a violent nature, that happened that same week in San Francisco. Now really, we could go through the statistics for the US, which are similarly depressing, but really all you need to do is think about the assault stories that you've heard from your friends or their friends to know that there is a crime problem in the US. So Artemis helps you be safer. It is smart jewelry. So how it works is if you're walking down the street, someone decides to attack you, you press the button on it three times. It uses Bluetooth that goes through your smartphone. In under a second, it contacts an Artemis security operator that's available 24 seven. They are able to contact the police, fire, or medical. The Artemis operator is able to hear anything that you say and able to hear anything that someone says to you, which is being recorded at the cloud and can be used in a court case. They also know what you look like and where you are. Artemis also simultaneously sends a text message to your loved ones with your current location and a request for help. This fundamentally changes what happens during an assault. This would have made a world of difference for the woman sitting at the bus stop. She would have been able to probably trigger it when she was thrown in the van people would have known what was happening and been able to track her. We are looking at a number of future features. One of them is crime alerts, and another one is a digital neighborhood watch system. Artemis is a fashion wearable. It will be available in necklace and bracelet form factors. Artemis will have a flexible style. There will be an Artemis compatible jewelry line. What you're looking at here is an example of a pendant design. There will also be other types of jewelry styles. You take the Artemis module, you pop it in the back of a piece of jewelry, and it looks just like normal jewelry. So it's very discreet, and it's kind of your hidden superpower. Our initial target market is women aged 25 to 40 who live in cities and use public transit frequently. In terms of finances, there's three markets to be aware of. One is wearables, another is private security, and the third is jewelry. Combined, these are projected to be $400 billion in the near future. Large market, we're right in the middle of it. In terms of price point, we're, these are not uh, exact, but we're looking at $150 for what you see here, which is the Artemis module with the electronics and the necklace design. We're also looking at a $15 to $20 per month security service subscription. That's so that we can have 24-7 security operators around. We have done a financial model for this. We're looking at a projected revenue of $56 million in 2016 and $110 million in 2018. 
in terms of company stage, we have a CAD design, which Dylan did for us, <clears throat> a few looks like prototypes, an acts like prototype, which we've been using for testing. We have 80 women who've enrolled in our beta program who want to get uh, their hands on the first ones of these that come out and use them. We have over 350 women that have participated in Artemis research studies, and we have people who are interested in pre-ordering. In terms of finances, we're asking for $500,000. That should cover us for 12 to 14 months. It will cover prototyping, small patch production, <clears throat> marketing, tools and equipment, and consulting. We do have a couple of competitors. One of them is Cuff. They are in the fashion space. However, they do not have a 911 service. We've talked with our target market. They are very interested in having police arrive when there's actually a problem. That's something that they don't do. Uh, another competitor is First Sign, and uh, they do have a 911 service, but they are a plastic hair clip, so they're not really in the fashion space. In terms of our team, I'm Jeff Axup. I have background in user experience, Scott Buchanan, background in engineering, and Dylan Goldfuss, who has background in hardware and jewelry, who's here. We also have a number of advisory boards for critical functions. And that's Artemis, smart jewelry for personal safety. And remember, Artemis helps keep you and your loved ones safe. And if you would like to sign up for either our beta program or for announcements, go to ArtemisFashion.com. Thank you. Awesome. All right, guys. Any questions for Jeff and Dylan and Sun6? Oh, we got one right here. Oh, we got two. Oh, I saw you in the back. Don't worry. We'll get you next. Here you go. Um, I love the concept. Just a quick question. Are you going to have a big variety? Because the way I see it, if you don't have a big variety, that, and then you market your brand, and people would know that this is an Artemis safety necklace, and then they can just take it and throw it away, or they do something, and then it might become pointless because you've marketed it. So uh, it's an excellent point. Um, we probably will have a, or we are going to have a range of different styles. Uh, we'll be producing some of those ourselves and we're also interested in partnering with major jewelry brands. Uh, basically, this, the, the electronics just pop out of the back and then pop into whatever they need to go into. So eventually there will be hundreds of different kinds of styles. It'd be very hard to predict whether or not a woman is wearing this and we're actually trying to make it hidden on purpose. Um, you can also put this inside your shirt, so it's not visible at all. Yeah, we want to encourage people to express themselves in whatever way they want, so we're kind of, you know, this invisible feature, this invisible orientation, that fits into whatever you might be wearing. Uh, so what, uh, what kind of action, how quickly do they respond once somebody signals that they're in trouble? Um, for the hotline. <coughs> Sorry, was the question, how, how does the security company respond? Well, yeah, how quick are they to respond and to send help over, other than your loved ones being able to come and track you? Uh, in just a few seconds, or as long as it takes to determine what is actually going on. Uh, many different types of emergencies can happen. They can listen to what's happening, or what you're requesting, or what it sounds like is happening. Um, they would make that decision as rapidly as possible, and then they are your security advocate. So they contact police, fire, or medical, depending on what you need. Um, it's th that part of it is rapid, and then it's up to the emergency service to to respond to whatever type of event it is. We got, we got one right back here. Sorry, I'll, I'll come yep. get you guys two next. We got one right. Here. Um, so first, I want to say that I love that you guys are user testing with women. Um, my question for you is: Do you have any women on your core team, and if not, do you plan to add any? To understand the core. Um, we. Uh, do have women who are advising us in various ways. We also have advisory boards with assault victims and things like that uh, on them, so we have a lot of input. Uh, we are interested in finding a designer that understands our target market. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of the design ourselves with our own personal background, but we're well aware of the complexity of, of female fashion design. <laughs> so we are, we are looking for more input in, in that area. Um. Is there any way that Artemis could work instead of pressing on it three times? Because I might get kidnapped and someone pulls my hand, so how am I going to connect with it? You said you have to press three times, right? Correct. Are asking if it pairs with the smartphone? Or? No, I'm saying is there any other way because someone might just ha hold my hand so I won't be able to press on it. So how would that work? Um, okay, so um, we do have 
a number of ideas for how to activate the device that I don't really want to get into right now. Um, however, um, we are trying to find something that's very rapid to do and which can't be done by accident very easily because people are worried about triggering this thing when they're at dinner, you know, things like that, having police show up. Um, and so we're kind of walking this line of something that is, is really fast to do, but that you can't do by accident very easily. Um, and we do have some other ways that we're looking at to make it even faster um, and more flexible for, for you to do it. But um, I think it's something like 60% of attacks happen from behind as a surprise. So if you've just been attacked from behind and you didn't expect it, the, 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 like the two places that you have available to you are right here and your wrists. So those are the two places that we're looking at so that the, the safety device is always on you and always available. Hi, um, Ben Bootstrap Lab. So I'm surprised that the age range doesn't go further down. I mean, why 25, why not you know, 16, and then why not children? Because quite frankly, I mean, you would want to track your kids, make sure they're safe. And another aspect is, think about lifetime value of subscriptions. So give me a deal and I'll buy it for my kids for the rest of their lives mm -hmm. in terms of revenue model. So um, we did look at, uh, well, so to be honest, um, our, our full target market is 16 to 40 or 50, something like that. We're just focusing on the original, or on an initial market that we think is uh, easiest to sell to and that would, would want what we're producing. Um, we're also looking at the college freshman market as definitely a market. It's a little more complex to sell to that market. Um, kids and the elderly are entirely different markets. Uh, they have very different use cases. They have different understanding of privacy. Um, this is not a device that tracks the person all the time. This is, this is for a, 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 an adult woman who wants her privacy. Kids are very different, uh, and they're all already competitors in both the uh, child safety market and the elderly care market, which is not where we're competing at the moment. But for a roadmap, potentially that would be something interesting in the future. So one, one more question, Tim. Sure. Uh, this isn't a very empathetic question, but I, I got the impression that you were trying to set up your own call center. I was wondering why is that? Uh, I'm not so familiar with call centers, but I would imagine there'd be third parties that would white label their call centers. It seems like an expensive, a uh, very big part of your OpEx to have that. Dedicated. So, a very good point. Um, we are a smart jewelry company, not a safety company. We may be producing other smart jewelry products in the future. Um, at the moment, we're essentially outsourcing the security function to a security company that we partnered with who can offer that service much better than we can. However, I've also talked to investors who really want us to own this, the, the uh, security operation service as well. So um, I, either one would be potentially an option in the future, but uh, starting out, we're essentially outsourcing that, and it means that we can provide a higher quality uh, security function to our customers. All right, guys, one more round of applause for, for Jeff and Dylan. Thanks.